Hi guys, this is Eric Cressy, and I wanted to take you through some of the cues that we use when we're coaching pull-ups, chin-ups, um, and, and even you know some other exercise that we'll use with the hands up overhead. And before we really get to that, I think it's important to appreciate the, the functional anatomy of the lats, you know, the, the primary muscle group that we're training um, when we're doing these, these vertical pulling variations. And when you really think about the attachment points of the lat, they run from the, the thoracolumbar fascia down your, your lumbar spine, up onto your rib cage, and they attach on your scapula on the way by, and then they obviously attach on your humerus. So while a lot of people are thinking as I'm doing these pull-ups, pull-downs, I'm just extending my humerus, in reality, they can have this prominent gross extension effect where they may pull you into an excessive lordotic curve, they may pull that scapula assess excessively into depression, um, and they may actually pull that humerus um, into internal rotation excessively. So these are issues that may not be as big of a deal in someone who sits at a computer all day, but in our young athlete population who spend a lot more time standing, who are involved in extension rotation sports, that can make that, that anterior pelvic tilt, that lordotic curve, excessive to the point that maybe they run into some kind of structural issue like a spondylolysis or a spondylolisthesis. Maybe it, it helps to contribute eventually to a femoral last tab or impingement at the hip or even a sports hernia. Any of those things that we see with these, these big anterior tilts and, and excessive lordosis that puts us in so much extension that we wind up having problems. So when we're cueing our exercises, it's very important for us to understand that one, it has to be the right fit for the athlete. If they're in excessive extension, then doing a lot of pull-ups may be counterproductive because that lat is really gonna take over for the lower traps and it's gonna pull our shoulder blade down so much that our upper traps are actually at a mechanical disadvantage. But I think we also have to appreciate if you know if we are gonna do it with these athletes who are you know qualified candidates for it, that we cue it the right way. So if we're looking at a, a rowing exercise from the side, one of the big cues that we're always giving folks is learn to move the scapula on the rib cage. What you'll often see people do is they'll slip into this extension pattern where the rib cage shoots right up instead of actually moving the scapula on the rib cage. When you get into that extension pattern, the tendency is to just pull through with excessive extension of the humerus. And in the process, you'll see that that scapula will actually enter your tilt. So when you see someone with this gross extension pattern, a lot of their rowing exercises wind up looking like this to really exaggerate it. So eventually we want to get into the point where it's just like this and you'll notice that when the scapula is positioned correctly, the elbow really doesn't wind up far behind the body. And that's especially important when we're dealing with overhead throwing athletes because a lot of these athletes, as they externally rotate a lot, um, or any sport where they spend a lot of time in, in extension or external rotation or excessive horizontal abduction, they wind up with loose anterior shoulders. So excessive external rotation or extension can create anterior instability. And that can be reinforced when we do our rows or obviously when we do our pull-ups. So we're doing our pull-ups. It's really important that we give the right cues to folks. So the last thing we want is for them to get to the top position and wind up with their elbows past the body. It's plenty of extension just to get to neutral. So as we're going through these pull-ups, or chin-ups in this case, from that bottom position, as we get up to the top, the cues really are to get those elbows even with the body at most, and more specifically, activate that into your neck, brace that into your core, and just go to neutral. So if we're gonna do it incorrectly, we'll have the, the camera set up over here. You'll notice my elbows will wind up further back, and my head will actually come forward. So, the whole idea of doing an actual chin-up can kind of be a misnomer because it, it encourages people to go into that forward head posture that can contribute to that aggressive scapular anterior tilt. So really important if you are going to do pull-ups to just go to the point that you're neutral and not think about aggressively cranking that scap down and pulling into a lot of extension. For some people with a history of extension-based low back pain or a really overactive lats, we may actually just cue them straight legs down, brace anterior core, and activate glutes because it'll keep them out of that aggressive anterior tilt. For other folks, especially as they start to load it up, they tend to want to cross their feet behind them and, and put the knees in knee flexion. If that's the case, just make sure the anterior core is engaged. So recapping, brace glutes when you can, activate anterior core, don't aggressively pull shoulders down, keep the chin tucked and extend just to neutral.